Stem cells are cells that have the ability to uh, uh, divide so that you can get huge numbers of them. Most cells in the body are not dividing anymore. They are doing whatever they were intended to do, and that's it. Whereas the stem cells remain as a repository of tissues as they are needed, so they have the ability to uh, divide and create many more cells like them. And then the other property that they have is that they have the ability to turn into many different tissues as needed. Uh, for instance, you have skin cells, skin stem cells, that will turn into more skin as you, as you have a scratch and you need to repair that. New stem cells will migrate to the place of the injury and will uh, restore, regenerate that tissue. So they have these two properties, uh, proliferate and differentiate. And if you put these two things together, in the case of diabetes, you have the potential of creating a huge number of cells and then you can turn into insulin producing beta cells. By almost any measure, embryonic stem cells remain the gold standard of all stem cells. Those are the ones that proliferate the fastest. Uh, every 24 hours, uh, average, they duplicate, they double their numbers. So we can get huge numbers of them in, very, in a very short period of time. And they also have the ability to turn into every cell type of the body. Then you have adult stem cells, which are obtained from adult tissues. And uh, some of them have the potential to um, proliferate, even though not as much as embryonic stem cells. But certainly, they are more limited in their ability to turn into all the different tissues that we may need. For instance, mesenchymal stem cells, which are the, the workhorse of all uh, adult stem cells, which are like the glue that keeps the body together, those mesenchymal stem cells can turn readily into tissues like um, bone, cartilage, or fat. But it's much more difficult for us to turn them into liver or pancreas or no other tissues. So we have to do an extra effort, to make an extra effort to turn them into those tissues. Perhaps the most appealing uh, feature of embryonic stem cells and other stem cells is the fact that you can uh, get huge numbers of them. They can divide very fast. And this, which is something that can be used to our benefit, can also be uh, troublesome in clinical settings. Because no matter how careful we are, when we differentiate the stem cells into, say, beta cells, it's impossible to prevent that some of them remain undifferentiated. And those cells will keep dividing when we transplant them into recipients and therefore they can form a tumor. So we have to be extremely careful to prevent this, or if it happens, to minimize the occurrence of that uh, event. The idea of the Swiss Gene Project is to have a built-in mechanism inside the cell that will prevent the formation of tumors. And in fact, in, over the past, uh, when we conceived this uh, strategy, uh, we decided to refine the setting so that in addition to prevent the formation, preventing the formation of cells that will give rise to a tumor, we will also get rid of the cells that turn into non-insulin producing beta cells. So let me put it uh, more clearly. If you have stem cells and they, uh, you, you force them to differentiate into beta cells, any other cell, for instance, that you got like liver cells or an eye cell or uh, an intestine cell will commit suicide. Only the cells that make insulin will survive. And also, we'll get rid of all the cells that keep dividing after the differentiation. The cells that have the potential to give rise to a dangerous tumor will commit suicide as well. So you have this double fail-safe mechanism to take care of uh, uh, this misbehavior, if you will, of uh, stem cells. Over the past year, we've been uh, very busy building this vector. This, this project has two phases, very well-defined phases. The first phase is to build these two or three suicide genes that we want to put into the cells. And then we want to test the system in animals to see if it works. Okay? That's the most exciting part. You want to see how this may prevent the formation of tumors. But unfortunately, to get to that point, uh, we need to do a lot of work before that. And we've been busy for the past two years making this vector. And the problem is that to assemble these genes, um, we soon realized that the traditional tools that we have in molecular biology to assemble genes and put them in cells are not sufficient. This is way too complex for those uh, techniques. So we had to resort to a new uh, type of technique. 
in the past, we used to take genes from one species and then cut and paste, like in a piece of paper. And the analogy I usually uh, use is uh, like a ransom note. You cut a word from one magazine, and then you cut another one from a newspaper, and then you put them together. Uh, it's extremely complicated to do things in this way when you have a very long and complex uh, vector like the one that we want to do. So we contacted this company uh, that has, following the same analogy, they have a typewriter. With this uh, typewriter, you can actually write the message that you want. Instead of having to cut and paste, you can write whatever you want. This means that in addition to making it faster and in a more, much more efficient way, you can actually, you have now the luxury of doing it um, in a more elaborate way. You can write more things. You can make the message more complete. So again, following the analogy of the ransom note, instead of saying $1 million, you can say, I want $1 million in non-sequential $20 bills. <laughs> so that's the kind of message that we are putting into cells, a much more elaborate message. We are now at the point when we can test uh, the most exciting part is ahead of us because now we have the vectors and we can put them into cells. The cells that we're going to use, we are growing them as we speak. These are the uh, embryonic stem cells that we are growing in order to uh, put inside them the suicide genes. So we just played them uh, earlier today. They're still finding their way, settling down. By the end of the day, they will be covering most of the area that we see here. So uh, hopefully, you know, even though it seems that we haven't done much uh, on paper, we've done already 80% of the work. The remaining part, which is the exciting one, is 20%. Uh, you know, the most uh, difficult part has already been done.